and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Senzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I know the greatest magic word of all, paid vacations. That's two words. Still, it's magical. Indeed. So, in, uh, as you can hear, we only have the both of us, me and Silver. So, it's a solo duo show. Yay. Solo du- duo like Han and Chewie? Yeah, or, uh, oof, uh, I'm trying to remember names, uh, Obi-Wan and... Anakin? Yeah, well, who's the older guy? I forgot. Oh, Qui-Gon? Yeah, Qui-Gon Jin. So Qui-Gon is long gone. Ha <laughs> uh, it's all good, it's all good. But anywho, um, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 1, Episode 11 of My Little Witch Academia, Blue Moon. In this episode, despite uh, desperate to know if she can ever overcome her magical difficulties to be like Shiny Chariot, Aku uses the Blue Moon's power to search for an answer. So before we hop right into it, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think? Well, this episode is a is a different beast than others. Up until now, it's really been Akko struggling with school, forming personal bonds, really asserting herself as a character. This, I think, is the first episode in a while to really touch on the bigger world and the troubles facing them. It's actually surprising how much of a bubble in which Akko operates. And it also finally addresses, at least in part, the elephant in the room. The thing which Norman spoiled for everybody early on. Way to go, Norman. It's so obvious. Still, Norman, you gotta give people time. Yeah. I'm watching it with them at the same time. My goodness. Everyone point and shun him, if only because he opened this video by saying, My Little Witch Academia. <laughs> it's been a while since I said it. Yeah. But yes, we're, we're so thoroughly trained on this. <laughs> yes. Anything more to add, Silver? Well, not until we get into the the thing proper. All right. And as for me, I like this episode. This episode is awesome. Like you mentioned before, Silver, yes, it does uh, go in depth in the world uh, and how it operates and whatnot. And we have and we learn lore. Yes, that's always good. But we also see Akko develop, so that's even more awesome. And what else can I say? Um, well, I like it. It's one of those episodes that make me want to watch more of it. But anywho, if you guys have not watched this episode, pause your and go do so. Welcome back. So, we start off the episode with Akko and Miss Ursula trying to fix a statue. This is one of those classes where, or not really class, but more of a study session that Miss Ursula is helping Akko with. Uh, She's helping Akko with a restoration spell or was it a repair spell? I think it was a repair. Uh, the repair spell and what they're repairing is a statue. I got no idea. This should be a very popular statue but I got no idea the name. Do you know him, Silver? Mm, offhand, not off the bat. Mm, it's cool, it's cool. One sec. Let me do just a quick set search. So while you do that, I'm just going to uh, carry on. So the magic that she's trying to learn is restoration magic and yeah uh, she's supposed to mimic the statue I think it's a naked guy throwing a disc but Akko doesn't really match it one to one it looks different and yeah I mean it's fixed but it's not like the um, original model still it's a nice try and Akko here says that, sorry, not Akko, but Miss Ursula here says that, oh, Akko, no problem. You mean, this is just your 100 try. I think you're making good progress. And Akko just says, it's my 101 try. Uh, I'm not getting anywhere with this. This is frustrating. Uh, She's failing magic 101. By the way, the statue is apparently named Discolobus. Discolobus? Huh. Or Disc, I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. Disc Obelus. Huh, Disc Obelus. Which feels a little too on the nose. No idea, man. 
back the day stuff. I don't know. It feels like if you if you named uh, the Lincoln Memorial uh, sitting on Thronicus. <laughs> Probably. Or the Washington the Washington Monument, Phallicus Maximus. <laughs> Hey, that could be real, man. That could be real. And Americans won't even know what it means. And yet we'll feel the near need to giggle. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, uh, with the failed attempt, uh, Akko goes back to her room and, well, mopes a bit and just kind of loses her spirit and whatnot. Uh, we see Lotte... Um, studying a bit, we see uh, Susie meditating, and Akko just here says like, "Miss Ursula is trying help uh, and helping me with studies, but I just can't get anywhere." And I just want to know, like, if maybe if I meet up with Chariot, she'll give me some words of inspiration and tell me that I can do my best and whatnot. Maybe I can do it. And I think what Lotte was the one that pointed out that. Um, shiny chariot used to study in the sorry used to study in Luna Nova. Maybe she recognized her and maybe you know could tell her stuff about her. And Lo, sorry, uh, and Akko here is well inspired and decides to visit her in the middle of the night. While this is going on, uh, we see Miss Ursula staring into the star, looking at the big. Dipper. I think it's the Big Dipper. If I'm not mistaken. And while that is happening, we have a flashback of Shiny Chariot. And, hmm, why is Miss Ursula having flashback of Shiny Chariot? Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> ah, Norman, stop spoiling it for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's a knock on the door and Miss Ursula goes to answer it. She sees it's Akko and says that she's not ready or not prepared. So she decides to, well, cover her face because she doesn't have glasses on and ties her hair up. And Akko comments, oh, you have a familiar. What was it again? What was uh, it's, it's a bird. Uh, but crow she, familiar. Crow familiar. All right. She has a crow familiar. And yeah, she's just there. And uh, Mr. Sa asks, well, why are you here? Uh, Akko just says that, oh, uh, you were here, you were a student here in Luna Nova, right? Uh, that means you and Chariot uh, could have crossed paths before. So what was she like? Were you in the same class and whatnot? And Miss, uh, Miss Ursula tries to play dumb and whatnot. And Akko just says, oh man, like, I really want to meet her. I mean, I want to at least talk to her and just know how she was when she was my age here in the school and maybe I can get some words of wisdom from her. Miss Ursula hearing this tells Akko uh, what you call this tells Akko that there's a phrase that she learned when she was in uh, what you call this in school. What was the phrase, phrase again? Uh, it was Pi, 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 sorry, give me a second. This is one of those words that I am not good at. Fido Ari Afagiaro. Oh, God, no, I don't know. Oh, God, no, I got no idea how to say that word. Sorry about that. But anyway, uh, the word translates to that one should strive for what he or she wants to achieve. Oh, man, I feel like I got that wrong. It's more along the lines of you get what you... You don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. That is correct, that is correct. Uh, I'm reading from the wiki here, so I may got I may get things wrong. And yeah, forgive me for that. Uh, what what Silver mentioned just now was from the Netflix version of the show. So yeah, we'll I'll we'll follow that for now. And yes. Uh I think that's the same quote as Batman, right? You you're the hero that we need, not the hero that we deserve. Something like that. Or he's the hero we deserve, but not the one we need. Ah, yes. I don't get it. I don't either, but it sounds cool. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, hearing that Akko just like, 
oh, okay, that's cool. Suddenly, the blue moon shines strong and bright, and Miss Ursula just comments like, oh, yeah, blue moon, that's cool, that's cool. We cut, oh, you know, I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see, let's go Let's go through this here, thingy Uh First off, the talk about what happened to Shiny Chariot and all these speculations. I appreciate Susie, but... Uh, going the darker routes of, oh, maybe she was turned to stone. And you just realize, don't try not to cut yourself on that edge, dear. <laughs> but I am personally more uh, a fan of uh, Lote. Maybe she fell in love and then whisked off on a whirlwind romance. It's like, oh, a fellow shipper. How <laughs> could I, uh, how could I resist? Oh, so, man. But it's kind of, it's kind of funny that this is their, this is the last role in this episode. Oh? It's just kind of funny that to, they won't really do anything for the rest of the episode, except sleep. Oh, you mean for this, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fascinating, by the way. Um, they're just there to tell Akko about, or just to set things up for Akko that, yo, maybe talking to Miss Ursula, you get more info. So why don't you go and meet her? Yes. And so the meeting with Miss Ursula, okay, yes, the writing is on the wall along with her glasses. But that just makes it funny when she's like, oh, yes, she was quite pretty. Really? <laughs> really? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, have you heard? Like Clark Kent, he's an awesome reporter. He covers all the Supermans. Ursula, you are be very, very, very shallow. I mean. Oh, pride cometh before a fall. <laughs> uh, I mean, she is pretty, by the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, have you not seen her red hair? Like, that's awesome. Mm. <laughs> uh, dude, you're pulling a Wolverine on me. You're falling for the redheads. Uh, <laughs> why not? Right? Like, they're, they're they're pretty cute. I mean, look at Kim. Possible. Well, in any case, case. So all this is just set up, but then we get. Well, I don't think we've really gotten to the topic of the blue moon. Once in a blue moon. Yeah, I mean, they talk a good game about it, but we don't really know what it does. Well, we know that it's rare, and rare events give a whole special power. Yeah, I know. It's one of the blue moon. Yep. But we also cut away for exposition. Ah, are we going to talk about the teachers? Hey. Ah, yes. So, anyway, uh, moving on. We meet up with the senior teachers discussing about how witchcraft has gone down the dumps and it seems that magic is also going down too. Oh no, my stock in some magic cards has gone down. Oh, that's really, really bad. Oh god, no. What should I do? Ah. And there's a knock on the door and it's... Ah, what was it? Diana, yes. Diana, she goes to the principal's office asking for a book. Said book is called Nine... Oh, just give me a second. I'm trying to find if this is how you say it in English or what. Okay. Nine Old Witches. Does it right? It definitely is the Nine. Which right now, I'm actually thinking of Destiny 2. <laughs> the Nine, call me. Close enough. But um, I'm looking here at a week. Wiki and says nine old O L D E old old. Is that how, is this how you say it? Ah, uh, old old. Uh, okay, nine old witches. Maybe it's European. I mean, color spelled with a U. What's up with that? I don't know, man. Like that, that's color. Uh, color. <laughs> I don't know, man. And also, what trousers instead of pants? What's that all about? I know. Can someone tell me? Because I'd like to know. Hey. <laughs> but anywho, so anywho, uh, Diana goes in asking for a book and the headmistress says, yeah, I know about the book. Uh, why don't you use this key to look for it? But be careful not to get stuck or something like that. Um, it's very ominous. Uh, om- 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 ominous. Is that? No, that sounds wrong. Ominous. Oh, man. How do you say this, Silver? Uh, Omnibus? No, no, no. Very bad. Omnibus. Oh, op- ominous. 
ominous. Yes, thank you. So, anywho, um, we somehow go into a forest where we see a witch. And said, which is chariot. Ooh, saying something about the blue moon comes once in a while and something like that. And Akko wakes up from her dream. She goes to her trade binder to look for the blue moon card. And she remembers the history of the, well, she remembers the stories and whatnot. And says a story that there is a hidden catacomb or hidden underground lair called the... Oh man, I'm trying to remember hard for this one. Uh, the, what you call this? Um, called the Blue New, New Moon Tower or something like that? Or Grotto? Or, yes, the Blue Moon Abyss. So she reads up on the card and says, okay, uh, whoever uh, goes to the abyss uh, will find a ghost and if the ghost trusts you, you get your answer, your deepest answer. She, a ghost knows the future, past, and, sorry, past, future, past, present, and future. So Akko dress up and heads to the uh, New Moon Tower and stuff. So... With that, we see that Diana goes to the tower to read up on the book. And she reads the book about the witches that she's looking for. Uh, at the same time, we see Akko uh, going to the altar. And somehow the shiny rod uh, reveals her the secret underground passage. While this is going on, we see Diana continue reading the book. Oh, wow. There's so much to cover with the book and the golden age of witchery and whatnot. Uh, I am going to skip most of it because I can't remember. But anywho, um, back in the days, witch, witches were awesome and whatnot. And there is what you call this, uh, something to do with the magical world or magic being locked away and something like that was it silver well there are apparently what was it nine words of power yes Bas basically these words need to be unlocked and said to well i think it's implied to restore magic to its full strength and so speaking them is is critical but no one knows all the words i guess it's the worst game of scrabble ever <laughs> oh that's terrible Oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I usually would get creamed in words with friends with other people, but yeah, that's just life. Yeah, true, true. Uh, it's one of those cases where words are hard. But anywho, there's nine words that needs to be said to unlock the full potential of magic. And that's what Diana is reading. Mm, and she's trying to figure out what's the word. Is it... Hocus Pocus. A bird, bird, bird. A bird is the word. It's oh. a bird, bird, bird. Oh no. But anywho, uh, it seems that Miss Ursula knows all of the words because she has a cheat sheet. But she can't use them. Yes, I wonder why. And one of the words Akko already unlocked when she first came to the school. And she, what, activated the shiny arrow? I thought it was like shiny lance, even though that's not the right... Uh... It's an arrow, not a lance. I, I don't remember. But still, it's one of those things where, yeah, she unlocked the uh, rod to... She changed the rod to an arrow. So, that's awesome. And suddenly, one of Miss Ursula's cauldron lights up and shows that, hey, Akko is in the cave below. And we join Akko. And we see that, hey, uh, Akko is a klutz. And she's been scared off by rocks. She stumbles her way deep inside the catacombs and falls to the ground. And I'm going to pause here. So, Silva, what do you think? Well, going back to the wit the school heads talking, this is just pure artificial exposition as they are all talking about stuff they already know. In fact, the only thing that's missing are those is that critical, terrifying phrase in storytelling as you know. 
Now, as you know, Norman Senzo, we are doing a podcast. We are talking into these devices called microphones, and they are being recorded by computers. That is true, Silva, but as you know, we are not on the Friendship Express, so exposition is not there yet. And yet, we are fully capable of doing this thing because we have these devices called (laughs) mouths that allow us to shape words by moving air from our lungs over a tongue and shaped by the lips. I think I have beaks. And as we know, a beak is a, is a feature of a bird. A bird is a creature that is distinguished by its wings, which are appendages. You see where I'm getting at this? Yes, yeah, Silver, but did you know the bird is the word? A bird is the word. A bird is the word. Yes. Oh, yeah. It turns out the final, the final word of power will be bird. <laughs> And that's what the that's when the crow familiar be like, ah, see, I'm relevant. I'm relevant. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Silly gonna see. Oh, but uh, you were saying something. <laughs> well, so that scene it, I get that it establishes the the burden hanging over the witches. Something that has been hinted on but might have been forgotten as we witnessed Akko's just personal day to day interactions. True. But at the same time, too, I'm trying to think of a logical reason for why the head staff needs to talk about said um, situation. I mean, it could be there for a meeting, uh, that's understandable, or it could be just that not all of them know the current situation. Well, honestly, I feel like if they had just gotten the census results back, then they could talk about, oh, look at how everything is 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 dwindling. Then at least they could have... But then launching into the full history, that's like a step too far. Honestly, I guess this is where Diana's... Uh, her ex- excelling in classes, she could be reading up and understanding the current state of things better. But she's already advanced, so she probably knows the state of the world uh on her own if it were someone like akko learning about the the troubles plaguing them that might be something different but i think akko does know that witches in the world seems to be not doing well since what there's always signs of uh which witches being um looked down upon or witches not really being there with what and andrew was it Oh yes, yeah. Her, her, her shipping fodder. Yeah, with her dad saying that witches are kind of old news, and with Fafnir the dragon saying that it's all about the stock exchange and whatnot. <laughs> I did love that episode. But still, it, it feels like the signs are there, and I haven't seen all of it, so I got no idea what's what. But it feels like they're setting up. A scenario where Akko seems to be the chosen one and she's the one to rise, uh, to bring the rise of the witches back to its old glory. It feels that way. Or it could just be that she's going to be Dark Vader. I can see Shane Chet. You were the chosen one! You were supposed to restore magic, not, not uh, eclipse it in darkness! And Akko's like, <laughs> Lady, you've watched too many movies. <laughs> Magical bo- Shining Lance, boom, dead. Um, of course. But yeah, um, anything with that, Silver? It is weird that I thought that like Diana's research would lead her to a confrontation with the spirit or, or bumping into Akko as well. It is weird in this episode to see Akko operating in a bubble. That's... Isolated from all her friends or rivals. That's true on the part for Diana meeting with the spirit. Yeah, I, I had the sense that Akko and Diana would team up to kind of face the spirit and whatnot because it feels that way. And Diana's trying to do research on the matter, so the chances of her discovering it is high. But no, she's not there at all. And it's a surprise that Akko even know where to go. Maybe it's good for Akko to fly solo for a little bit. Yeah. This is a deeply personal thing for her. Yeah, and I, I do appreciate and I do agree with the writer's decision to uh, let Akko fly solo this time around. 
So anyway, uh, let's continue on. So as Ako recovers from her bump, she sees a figure, and said figure is Chariot. And it is Chariot. Oh, wow. Aku goes up to her, uh, wanting to know, like, yeah, just getting sage advice from her. And the advice that she gets from her is crappy. Really, really bad. And Aku, you can see Aku being distraught. But her resolve is strong and says, you're not the real chariot. The real chariot will never say something like that. You're a big phony. Who are you? The phony chariot somehow bursts into smoke and it's revealed that she's the spirit of the cave and whatnot. And the spirit asks, what do you want here and stuff? And Ako just says, I want to know my future. Will I become a great wizard or not wizard, a witch like chariot? And that's what she really, really wants to know. The spirit reveals a door and shows her being a wonderful and magical witch like chariot, performing the same tricks and whatnot, dressing in the same fashion. And Ako is tempted. All she needs to do is just walk through. But the cost is that you need to lose all of your past memories to attain your greatness. You can see Ako uh, hesitating for a bit. And she says, no, no, I won't sacrifice my past. Because even with the worst of times, uh, those are what make me who I am. Those are the things that improve me and those are the things that I cherish close. Is it something like that, Silver? Or am I making things up? No, you're not making things up. She she realizes those are those memories are what help shape her. Their meaning. So if you I think on some level she understands if she just takes an easy future but loses what built her up, she'll just be a husk. Mm-hmm. That is true. And carrying on, uh, Ako just says, no, I've learned uh, a once wise uh, witch told me this once. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I forgot. You, you you know better. What was it, Silver, the line that Miss Ursa told Ako? You don't get what you wish for. You get what you work towards. Yes. Uh, she says that and says the incantation in... Uh, witchery? I got no idea what it says. Yes, with those words, the rod becomes an axe and Akko swings it to the door or the base of the tree spirit thingy and destroys it while at the same time flashing through stuff revealing details of the past or future that is really scary. Akko faints and we see Miss Ursula walking through the cave and well rescuing her. We see that well Miss Ursula and the spirit seems to be on good terms and it seems that the spirit was a teacher from no Luna Nova and said teacher is Miss uh, Woodward <laughs> Woodward. It's like Squidward, but with trees. <laughs> I see what you did there. So, anywho, yes. Uh, Miss Woodward was uh, Miss Ursula's old lecturer. And it's revealed that Miss Ursula is actually Chariot. Oh, the, the revelation. Oh, I'm surprised. I didn't know that. Oh, gosh, no. Ooh. I'd be totally surprised if Norman hadn't spoiled it for me. Thanks, Norman. You're welcome. <laughs> God. <laughs> Shaw. But anywho, uh, let's see. Where was I? Yes. Miss mm, Ursula is chariot. And yeah, uh, Miss Woodward says that, oh, um, I gave an Ako the test and she passed with flying colors. Uh, Urs- um, <laughs> Miss Ursula here is what? shocked that she got the test and wow um 
That's surprising. And Miss Woodward here says, Chariot, you need to take care of Arco here because she could determine or she could be the fate of magic in the future. I hold you responsible for her upbringing. Oh, wow. No pressure, though. Yay. No pressure. With that, Miss Ursula carries Ako back to her dorm. And with that, episode ends. That was quick, yo. Yes, this episode seemed to go by much faster than others. But here's the thing. The episode is 24 minutes long. Okay, uh, if you cut the intro in back, it's about probably 20 minutes long. But still... I don't know what to tell you. Just, I think because it's dealing with a bigger world, you're we're being hit with a lot of information all at once by purely expositional teachers. Again, I'll, I'll try to let that go. <laughs> but at the same time, too, like, do you think the pace is not good or the pace is bad? From my personal point of view, I think it's stable. It's not... It's, it's nice and balanced. It's just that we are given a lot of info that we want to know more. Like, we want to know what's going to happen. We want to know how things work. Like, we got some lore. Yes, that's the thing. We got lore to the universe. And uh, how do I put this? There, there's a phrase... There's this phrase where... If you're enjoying yourself, time seems to fly by really fast. Time flies when you're having fun? Yes, that's good. That's good. That's better. And I say this is true for that. I don't disagree. I just talk in double negatives. <laughs> All right. Then. Anyway, uh, let's go for final thoughts. And what, did you, and what do you think, Silver? Well, this is an, a fun, interesting episode. I mean, I love the, the, the ghost, the spirit. And the way they make her so dang frightening looking at first. Uh, just this this test. It's like, hey, Akko, you ever seen Evil Dead? <laughs> okay, pro- probably better that you didn't. But uh, also, I just find it hilarious. Akko thinks she can cut a, a ghost. And the truth is, she can. True, I guess. I mean, the ghost did take form in wood, I think. Just <laughs> then, it would be funny if Akko was magically turned into a termite oh, to attack. Ah, oh, she's biting me! Ah, oh, <laughs> it's so terrible! Ah, oh, the pain! Oh man, it's interesting. I like that they're revealing how to put this. People, Americans especially, seem to resist the chosen one story, partly because it's done a lot. But I like the unlikely savior. I mean, it's kind of in the similar vein of Sailor Moon. You'd never expect this ditzy crybaby to be heroine and future ruler of the world. And yet it's a, it's a show of how a rough, a st- who you are at the start of your journey isn't the same as who you are at the end. Would you say the same for Avatar, The Last Airbender? Well, Avatar, I would say, was more how shortcuts undermine you. There, Well, honestly, I haven't actually seen the whole of Avatar, The Last Airbender, so... I would have to re-examine. I'd have to first see it and then examine it. But there was one other thing. When Akko is confronted by the what she thinks is Shiny Chariot, and it says, nope, you will never get what you wish for, and no matter how hard you try. And honestly, I flash back to My Hero Academia. And the very first episode where uh, Deku realizes what, he is uh, is told he can't be a hero. It is sort of that ultimate test to, to when a kid is is confronted by denial of their dreams, and not just like a bully trying to shut them down. It is an actual from a respected mentor shutting them down, and then it's that challenge: Do you give up and mope, or do you stay stick to your guns and keep trying? And I appreciate that with both Deku and Akko, though they express it in different ways, they both are unwavering in their resolve because it's something bigger than their idols even. This isn't a case of hero worship. The hero just embodies an ideal for which they're striving. In a weird way, I guess this episode moves Akko beyond her 
love of shiny chariot and makes her more of a independent witch for the future. And at the same time too, I think shiny chariot, <laughs> I think what a uh, shiny chariot represents an ideal for Akko because Akko believes wholeheartedly that shiny chariot tells her that you can do anything, magic is awesome and whatnot, and she sticks she sticks by her guns that, that is true. But at the same time too, when she's being told by her mentor or idol that you suck just give up. Like you're not going to go anywhere. And Ako reacts negatively to this because she knows that Shiny Cherry would never say those kind of things, even though if you suck, she always have some positive things to say. I mean, this is one of those cases where Akko knows Chariot and she knows that she won't say those kind of things. But at the same time, too, there's a chance where Shiny Cherry could have changed her mind. Why not? I mean, you see where I'm going here, Silva? Yeah, she she's not sure what what is real, so she just believes in the shiny chariot that represents something. Yes, and by that point, like she's already stuck to her ideals, and she is worshiping. Uh, worshiping is too strong a word. She's just sticking to her guns and believing in what she believes in. Although they do say never meet your heroes. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, true that. But we proved that we've proven that wrong, right? Actually, I remember James, after one of my truly awful puns, he's like, "Oh, never meet your heroes." Oh, uh, screw that. I I don't mind meeting my heroes. Like, I would love to. Personally, for me, I would love to know the person or my hero on a more human level. Like, I would love to know if they uh, play the Magics or any other card games or video games. Like, I would love to know that. Like, I want to know those kind of small, itsy bitsy, minuscule thing that doesn't really matter. You may just. And then you'll find out, yes, I run a red-blue combo. <gasps> How dare. Oh, interesting. Face me. <laughs> But uh, sorry for stealing your thunder, Silver. Well, honestly, I think we've we've reached the point. I mean, again, you must teach her to these magic, guide her to find these magic words and fix magic. Yeah, no pressure. So, are you going to help pay for her tuition? Oh no, sorry, got to go do mystical ghost things. See ya. Turn into f- leaves and blow away. Only oh, she made like a tree and leaves. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, is that all silver? That's it for me. All right, and as for me, this episode, if I have to put it on a scale of 1 to 10, this is a 9. It's, it's, I won't say it's perfect, but it's good. It's really, really good. Like, past episodes have been awesome, but this one here, this one sets the bar that, yo, this is one of those episodes where it's greatness. It's once in a blue moon. You won't get it a lot, but this sets a lot of things up for you for the future. So appreciate it. And yeah, it's really awesome. It's I dare say that it's better than the pilot. Oh, a bold claim. Yeah, and this is the pilot where they face a dragon. I think it was a dragon. Remember the one where we derp on the schedule and we have to rewatch it? Oh uh, yes, first well, I thought it was a cockatrice. I think the cockatrice was the first episode. Oh, now my head now I'm gonna get it confused again. It's like talking about the Star Wars order. <laughs> what one is four and four is one and you you and I are all one cuckoo ka choo. <laughs> oh boys. But yeah, um this episode here sets a lot of things up with Akko and how big of a responsibility she has. And having the character here being a klutz did she do, like, she she here doesn't know magic, but she's so dedicated to mastering it that she 
don't let anything drag her down. And you gotta respect that. Like that is awesome. Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Ain't nothing gonna slow me down. Oh no. I've got to keep on casting. Nice. And yes, um this episode features a lot of characters, but they don't do much. It's just exposition here and there, and that's about it. And you know what? I think most of the secondary characters are just there for exposition. Well, yeah, pretty much. Or at least to plant the seed of an idea. Lote probably makes the greatest contribution in that regard. Mm-hmm. And then the senior teachers just say that witchcraft and whatnot has been going down. Oh no. And Diana is... This is a history of the world. Pay attention because we won't repeat it twice. And yeah, it's this This is one of those episodes which is pretty awesome. I, I wish we had Terra here to share his point of view, but oh well, can't do much. Another time. Yeah, true, true. But I do hope that we get more episodes like this because lore episodes are just awesome. I guess those are my thoughts because I've been rambling so anyway um silver what are we gonna do next week well i think it's time to return to the pony life as we talk about how applejack got her hat back okay she doesn't get a witch hat like the like the witch is here but stetson is still gee yeah, true stetson is always cool but could you just imagine a j in a baseball cap they'll be look they'll, they'll look cool too only if i got to hear the da 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 <laughs> all right then So yes, uh, next week's episode review will be Pony Life. And yeah, this is going to be fun. Like, I can't wait to catch it because I haven't seen any stuff. So yeah, something to catch. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbstreetgmail.com. You can also reach us on on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at dmbstreetgmail.com and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can look for me in many places. On both Twitter and DeviantArt, I go by MLP Silver Quill. And on Patreon and Kofi, it's just Silver Quill, where you can support my videos and comics and other projects. Uh, we are back in the saddle with uh, IDW Comics, so please keep an eye on EquestriaDaily.com, where every Wednesday I will post a comic review. Well, I guess I should say every Wednesday where there is a new comic, I will post a review. And then... On the topic of reviews, head on over to YouTube and do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, and there you shall find me. Awesome. Go check him out, guys. His content is amazing. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also, you can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also Mass of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Jesse Raquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya! Now, as we know, goodbye is a phrase uttered when two individuals part ways, or it could be more, but it is a phrase that conveys well-wishing as we depart. Wow. That was a lengthy explanation on how goodbye works, Silver. Exposition, exposition, this is how we tell the folks. Oh, Silver, look, the French Express is over there. I'm getting real, real good. <laughs>